Hey guys, this is William from Property Buddy. Two days ago, Bank Negara made an announcement on the automatic moratorium, which means uh, you can make a deferment of paying your loan for up to six months, starting from April to end of September, six months. So what are the impact or what are the benefits that this package brings to you as a property investor point of view or property investor perspective. So instead of going through on the loan perspective, we will also cover as a property investor, how would it help you out or benefit to you or make advantage to you. So, and then we have also received some questions regarding whether as a property investor should I extend the moratorium to my tenant so that my tenant having a tough time having having a challenging time maybe they are doing business or self-employed they got a pay cut they got to take unpaid leave they don't have business to sustain they can't pay rental to you should you extend the moratorium benefit to your tenant as well probably you can reduce their their rental or probably you can just waive off their rental for a certain number of months up to six months since you are deferring your payment to the banks so today's topic would be on the use of moratorium to waive off your tenant's rental so let's go to what does this six months automatic moratorium covers and who is eligible it is involving individuals and also SMEs and what are the benefits of this automatic moratorium package it involves allowing you as an individual or the SMEs small medium enterprise to defer your loan for up to six months to help out on your cash flow during this challenging time so who will be applicable would be individuals and also SMEs you don't need to apply because this is an automatic moratorium we will also cover in the next few slides how it works how does the moratorium benefits you what kind of product and next what kind of product would be involved in this package it would be all type of loan except for credit card all type of loan including your car loan housing loan and your personal loan except for your credit card so uh the frequently asked question or the commonly asked question when you say about deferment uh, when i defer my loan what happened to my secrets under normal circumstances your loan will be tagged will, or will be flagged one for mispayment of one time two for mispayment two times and subsequent and wise and so on so under this package or under this situation bank negara have given a direction to all the banks that it would not affect your secrets so you just need to defer your payment for six months and these six months will not be flagging that you are not paying your loan or you're defaulting your loan so and also we will be covering another topic which as a as a borrower you need to know you have already seen news about compounding interest some banks are waving and some banks are not waving what is it about compounding interest does it mean uh, does it mean it is interest free for these six months it is not interest free you have to understand you have, it is not interest free the interest of the loan is calculated based on the outstanding principle if the bank announces that there is no compounding interest that means they don't calculate the owing principal plus interest and then on top of that they calculate the interest they make the calculate the interest calculation based on principal plus interest so without compounding that means uh, they calculate your interest based on whatever outstanding in your principal they don't add on to the interest so that's why it's no compounding so we will go through that as well so how this moratorium works first you got to understand your loan to to be able to be eligible for this package your loan cannot have 
any arrears more than 90 days starting from 1st of April. So 1st of April minus 90 days will be somewhere around January. So if you have loan uh, that you are not serving more than 90 days already, you are not eligible for this package. So do from, from 1st of April until 30th of September, these six months you can defer your installment payment. You can defer your car loan, your house loan, your personal loan. And then you have to resume all your payment in 1st of October. So you will ask, then um, what happened to this portion of money that I need to pay to the bank? It consists of principal and interest portion, is it right? And then how much do I need to pay in the after I resume the installment? So actually when you come to the repayment plan, there is three possible scenarios but it depends on the bank how they want to uh, make uh, what are the decisions made by the bank? Not all banks has already announced after resuming installment what what is the how would the repayment plan looks like? So for example, Maybank has already announced that after resuming installment, your installment will increase. So we actually can go through these three possible scenario that the after you resume installment, what would happen? The first one. Because this portion you didn't pay, my right? So logically, yeah, logically, this portion will add up into your subsequent installment. So that is the first scenario. You will have a higher installment upon res uh, resuming your payment in October onwards. So for the rest of your tenure. So that means these six months, uh, possibly the bank will decide to put into the subsequent installment. So let's say you're paying 1,000, now you have to pay more than 1,000 for the subsequent months. And second thing, they may remain the installment amount, but they will extend the tenure. Makes sense, right? If you don't increase the installment, that means you need to pay longer. For example, you need to, you are paying for the rest of the 20 years. Now you have to pay 20 years plus six months, eight months to pay for the rest of this deferred amount. All right. So the third one would be you pay at the same tenure, you pay at the same installment amount, but you have to pay all of the deferred amount here, accrued here, interest and also principal. You have to pay everything at the end of the, at the last installment. That's three possible scenarios would be applied by various banks. It depends on what are the decisions made by the banks, depending on how their system like, how their process like. So the banks are also making new announcements on this. Some have already made announcement like Maybank, they have already made the announcement they will be using this first approach. And then some banks are announcing on the compounding interest and the non-compounding interest. So this decision is actually depending on the bank. So far, only Maybank announced and others yet to announce yet. Uh, whether the interest will be compounded, that means uh, you are owing here. Ma. Your interest will always calculate based on the outstanding principal. So if they compound means uh, they will also calculate how much interest you haven't paid that we will go through after this. So uh, in the next slide, you will ask things like, should I defer my payment or not? because there is also interest applicable for the deferment. It's not a late payment. You don't get a penalty for late payment. You don't get uh, any any fees or processing fee, admin fee to do this deferment. It will be happen automatically. If you really don't want to opt into this kind of package, you can contact the bank and then opt out and pay as per, as per your installment statement. So we'll go through the table to whether decide uh, you should defer or not to defer. The first table refer here, right? We do a table with without deferment and with deferment. Loan amount, we will keep it at 500,000 for the for the sharing purpose. Huh? 500,000, the loan rate we use 4.5, 10 or 30 years. And why with deferment, this loan amount will be higher. Isn't it should be 500,000 for comparison? Later, we will come to this. So same rate and same so total interest uh, without deferment is 412,000. 
if with deferment is four hundred and twenty one thousand. All right, installment is two five three three for without deferment, and with deferment is two five nine zero. You can see that the total interest ah uh, when you do be that when you pay as usual, compared to you pay six months later, the total interest increase will be around ninety nine hundred nine thousand for thirty years loan, for four point five loan rate. And then the monthly instalment changes from without deferment to with deferment is about sixty a month based on this loan amount, loan rate, and tenure. So how does this ah five one one three five six comes? Because when you have deferment ah, you see ah when you have deferment, you are not paying it principal. All these interest ah. The bank won't wait for you. This interest will be add up to your principal at the month of October when you resume your instalment. Ah, it will be used to calculate your subsequent instalment. That is why it gives up to this figure five one one. So for standard payment, ah, standard payment you will see ah loan amount here. Every month you pay two five three three. Ma, two two five three three consists of this. You are paying to principal six five eight. And then you are paying to the interest one eight seven five, so that's why your balance ah will always minus the principal. So every month your balance will minus your principal, balance will minus your principal, and your interest will be calculated based on the outstanding principal. But in the with deferment ah, with deferment you are not paying, you are not paying instalment. The interest will still be accrued. Although they are bank saying that compounding interest will be waived, compounding interest doesn't mean this interest ah. This interest is the interest of your loan. Compounding interest means ah when they calculate your interest ah, they add on to whatever unpaid amount. So let's say ah, you are you they they calculate compounding interest that will be more than eleven thousand three hundred, because why? They calculate every month you didn't pay that amount into your principal. So we, when your principal is higher, your instalment for that month also will be higher. So that's why the interest, the interest that they calculate ah, for compounding interest will be higher than eleven thousand. This is only calculated based on non-compounding interest. So how does this thing comes by is here. After you add on everything, ah, you can see, ah, at the end of September, your balance of the loan now is five hundred and eleven thousand. Why five hundred eleven thousand? Because of this all accumulated accrued interest, ah. Now your interest starting from October will be calculated based on this. That's why, in October, if you if you do use the approach number one. To calculate your instalment, your instalment likely would be around this price, depending on what the bank decision and direction to be. Okay. So the total deferred amount, if you defer, that means a total deferred this one times six months, you total deferred fifteen thousand. So this will help you into making decision. Total interest just increased nine thousand plus every month difference of sixty sixty ringgit. Would that ah help you in terms of your cash flow or not? Most important thing is you ask yourself whether this will help into your cash flow or not. Whether you are self employed, SMEs, ah employed, or you are ah running your own business. So on the sixth, on the next slide, it will be a slight revision of the seven criteria. At this COVID nineteen, ah period, how does it impact to property investing? Last time when we cover these seven criteria, right, we mentioned about multiple rental strategies. Why is it so important? Now with COVID nineteen, it affects directly ah to tourism to. A airlines to F and Bs, so when it affect tourism, if you are buying a property that only target tourists, only target doing Airbnb business, 
your business is directly and seriously affected because you, you will have close to zero income because the whole month with this lockdown uh, there's no foreigners or no tourists can travel around no movement at all you have almost very minimal minimal uh, incoming tourists to rent your property if your property is targeted only for Airbnb or tourists so that's why we, we highlight and emphasize when you buy a property you must buy a property with multiple rental strategies and then the second one which is also relevant when you buy a property you have to know what are the target users are they buying for rental only rental it could be rental for expat rental for tourists rental for students rental for locals so all this right when you target only rent renting to people like tourists to expats when during this lockdown when movement are very restricted uh, the first one and the the expat will be will be very significantly affected so that is why when you buy a property you cannot it is highly recommended not to just target one type of users and yeah not to target one type of users and these two things will be related will be translated into your cash flow when your unit is not rented out definitely you will have a cash flow issue you're still paying to the bank but you don't get rental luckily now at least the bank Nagara initiative will help to relieve those who have tighter cash flow borrowers it's like this when your cash flow is very tied up restricted you can't even take on any other opportunity despite the market has a lot of other value investment available the shares the share price has dropped easily 20 to 30 percent over the past one to two weeks the property price some even drop as high as 40 to 60 percent 40 to 60 percent properties where new properties are selling at the much more um, value price some properties are selling uh, only as as the same price as the sub sale properties as the old properties new properties selling at old properties some sub sales are selling below market price auction even better the auction you can see from 20 percent up to 50 percent or more than 50 percent uh, from the launch price or from the market price also got so when when during this tough time when people say ma uh, in the Chinese saying ngai ke, yau ngai, zau bi yau ke. Just, they, when there's a risk there's opportunity but when your cash flow is so tied up right how how would you take on the opportunities for example you see this one from 19 19 may uh, to 27 uh, 19 march to 27 march merely about how many days eight days 27.5 percent increase so if you have that we have the cash on hand uh, we have the cash on hand uh, you have the flexibility and option to take on this kind of opportunity so um as a investor whether it's property or share the most important thing is to ensure that the cash flow is healthy during this tough time definitely that a lot of uh, a lot of things a lot of businesses will be impacted uh, some even have almost close to zero income during the COVID-19 time the period and also the the, during the move down uh, move the movement restriction order or the movement control order of initially two weeks and now extended to another two weeks until 14th of April so what are the possible things that you could explore whether you have the money or you don't have the money or you have very tight cash flow what are the things you should be thinking of during this tough time of course the first thing improve your cash flow 
cash flow 就是呃现金流。Why why why cash flow? As I explain in the previous slide, when you have better cash flow, you have the flexibility and option to take on opportunities. Then what are the second one? If you have personal loan, you have cut. Take on the opportunity or the advantage of current low rates. You don't get low rates all the time. Now, for property loan, if your profile is okay, is your good profile, you can get easily around three point six five percent loan to three point nine percent. So why, if you really have personal loan and Uh, credit cards. Why not just use these cheap rates? Ah,、uh, we call it cheap loans. Ah,、uh, to quickly pay off whatever high commitments that you have in your personal loan, term loan, or credit cards. Because all these ah,、uh, you are comparing something at four percent ah versus eleven percent up to eighteen percent for credit card. Why pay? Why making yourself so difficult in such situation? Now is the best. Not not the best time. Is the is the is the best time to take on advantage of cheap rate. At least ah,、uh, you can improve your cash flow. Then, if your property, if you own a property, you can do refinancing, and cash out. Keep the cash. Wait for opportunities. It could be something like public bank. Ah,、uh, in the article it says what rock solid company public bank drop. Thirty twenty to thirty percent. So when this kind of opportunity come comes by, ah,、uh, when you have cash, whether you want to buy, at least you got the option, you got the flexibility to buy, and you are earning, ah,、uh, you see, ah,、uh, you're earning how much? Twenty seven point five. And your loan, ah, four percent. Right. So I'm not asking you to to borrow to invest. You got to invest. Responsibly study, analyze what you are investing. Know what you are investing in. Then the third thing, and when you are ready, and you know that there are there are other、uh, ways that allow you to buy third properties ah、uh, with ninety percent loan. So you got to know how how to strategize, how to take advantage、uh, of this kind of、uh, financing product. If you were to invest into properties, so you can, let's say, because you bought two residential property, you have two residential loan already, right? Ah,、uh, definitely in your secrets will appear two loan, and then when when you apply for the third one, it will be only seventy percent. So how do you, ah,、uh, how do you make, how do you enable that your third property get ninety percent loan? That is something, ah,、uh, we wouldn't be sharing in the in the this video, but. In our top prop private group, it's a paid group. We we will share this. It will be more fair because they they actually paid and they will learn about how how these things will happen, including a more detailed things about how do you use cheaper loans to cover off to settle off to pay off all your expensive loan. How do you cash out? Cash out can be also like this. When you cash out, you also have to find suitable banker. You have to find a banker that know how to do how to how to act on the best interest of you. For example, you bring the same property. Ah,、uh, when you go to refi, you refi, you need to do valuation. One banker, ah,、uh, he can get maybe six hundred thousand valuation for your property. Your cash out would be very minimal, very limited. But if a banker knows how to do, he knows that maybe you need you are in need of cash. Ah.、Uh, To maybe to overcome ah、uh, to to sustain for for this four to six months, because as as everyone knows ah、uh, COVID COVID nineteen ah、uh, may be with us for a longer time. So when a lot of uncertain things ah,、uh, it's better that you are ready for it. Whether you have you reduce whatever exposure that you have with your high high commitment ah,、uh, your car loan, personal loan, or your your cards ah.、Uh, Especially your personal loans and your cards,、uh, those are double digits. Ah,、uh, interest rate financing products. Get rid of them. Try to reduce whatever financing cost you you can. So when you you can value at six hundred thousand, versus you go to another banker, maybe that banker can value it 
at 800,000. 800,000 if you take a 90% loan, uh, is uh, 80, 720,000. Uh. Compared to you take 600,000, you only get 540. Almost almost like a 200,000 difference. So that 200,000 difference uh, can make, not to make you rich is a borrowed money, but at least give you more opportunity, more option, and help you to actually overcome this tough situation of this uh, COVID uh, economy is not doing good. Uh. But of course, if you really don't have property then and you have like personal loan and credit cards, uh, one of the last way that you should be considering of reducing your exposure, your commitment uh, is what we call debt consolidation. So debt consolidation, that means uh, you, you consolidate, you group all whatever card commitment or your personal loan commitment into, in oh, sorry, your card's commitment especially because card's commitment is the highest interest. You group everything under one term loan or personal loan. So therefore, you can reduce your interest from 18% to probably around 11%. So that from the from the difference of like six to seven percent, it at least uh, re, uh help you to relieve more um cash flow out for your daily expenses uh for you to tell for you to actually sustain the tough time from 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 maybe February all the way to April or May or even longer depending on how the situation be. So, of course, if possible, you also have to build up your cash reserve. But if your, if your work, uh, your business uh, got impacted seriously, you having almost zero income, how would you want to build your cash reserve? So, it is through this, um, through this um, way of playing around with financing products. Uh, I'm not asking you to go into... Uh, I'm not asking you to go into uh, loans, uh, get a lot of loans to just prepare. But at least uh, you build up your cash reserve using the lowest possible uh, financing product that you can to sustain at least 6 to 9 months. So apart from the moratorium, you can also play around with this. But of course... Always remember, uh, leverage responsibly. Know what you are doing before you take up a loan, take up a financing products. So, um, that's all I want to share today. So, I'll keep you updated whenever there is any uh, new announcement or any other new topics or question being asked by our followers or our property investors or even uh, anyone that you want to ask question, just uh, maybe PM us or comment. Oh yeah, so since you are watching until the end of this video, uh, we would like to give you something as a bonus. Remember this one? If you were to check in, uh, how much do I need to pay when I go for like, uh, approach number one, higher installment. So just uh, share this out, share this video out. Hashtag PB, PB stands for property buddy. Hashtag PB, uh, defer or not. Hashtag PB, defer or not. Then we will share you this template so that you can also calculate on yourself. Uh, how much roughly how much installment uh, you need to make after deferring your loan so all you need uh, just to change the yellow highlighted cell you change your loan amount based on your current loan amount then your loan rate and also your tenor so roughly you will know it will not be 100% accurate uh, depending on what is the bank decision uh, on this year whether they are going for higher installment or extension of tenure or they want you to pay all the interest at the at the beginning of the resume or the end of the tenure it depends on the bank so just need to get the latest update from different banks lah. so currently we we know that uh, no compounding interests are HSBC uh, 
OCBC. Then Maybank will be covering not just the normal loan, they also cover up to undercon properties. So I think there are other banks also considering whether to extend the undercon properties loan benefits or not. So I think they will make more announcement in this couple of days. Uh. Then for the compounding and non-compounding, it will also depend on the on the banks uh, probably system whether they can support it or not. Uh, the processors involved, then they will make announcement whether uh, they would be they will be calculating uh, calculating your interest uh, this interest uh, when you defer uh, whether they calculate interest plus interest or they just calculate the accrued interest like this add on to your October October principle to calculate the next interest portion so I think that's all for today in um, if you have re remember this if you want the template, just share this video, share this post out. Hashtag PP defer or not. D E F E R O R N O T. Then we will we will send you a copy of the template. Alright. Uh I think that's all for today. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.